Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the plot. It's a uh, little bit cooler than what it's been of late. Uh, a little bit of rain starting to come down now. But, um, nevertheless, I'm going to uh, plot on with the, with this week's video, and of course, it's all about uh, feeding the crops. Well, uh, well, we finished off last week with the um, with the Jap onions. Of course, I'm uh, I'm going to pay some attention to the uh, to the summer onions now. And of course, these are the ones if you if you all remember. I planted way back in the January, and of course these are the um, the large Spanish onions. And at the moment, they're looking absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon with them. No damage to them. They've had nothing done to them whatsoever. Um, as I say, they're really nice, big, beautiful bulbs. But uh, what I want to do is to uh, give them a light feeding. And of course, this time of the year, when they when they're starting to yeah, the feed that you put in the ground is starting to weed down a bit. Um, what you want to do is just to give them a bit of a bulk and to finish them off, get them into that rear, get them into that cropping stage. And uh, what I like to do with the onions is just go along with a little general fertilizer, a little bit of blood fish and bone, and of course it helps with the ripe. And of course it'll, it'll fatten them up. Uh, they've got about another six weeks to go, or well, just at the beginning of July now, so I'm quite happy to get these out in their uh, first couple of weeks in August. Any longer than that, and of course you've got trouble with um, rot setting in, uh, white rot if you've got anything, or any diseases. Uh, but uh, hopefully these are looking cracking. A few bits of dead leaves in the bottom, what I like to do is just go along, pull them off, uh, just to make sure that there's no rot sets in. And uh, any damaged leaves around the bottom, just take them away. And just uh, say general fertiliser around them, uh, a good blood fishing bone, fantastic. And uh, that'll set them up really well for getting them nice and ripe, ready for pulling in the beginning of August. But uh, as I say, it all starts with the um, with the soil. Uh, it's getting your beds prepped. And uh, what I've done, uh, what I've done today, I've been up to uh, the stables up in Preston and getting a, a few bins of muck. If you've been watching on my Facebook page, uh, I posted the other night. I got my little trolley out and I managed to get up there and get a, a couple of bin loads. So if I can do that twice a week, I'll be over the moon. But uh, it's all about preparing your beds, and of course I'm uh, I'm getting ready for next year's. So I want, I want to get me builds, me bins well prepared and well filled up. And uh, as I say, I'll have plenty of good, well rotted compost in January and February to start prepping the beds. But um, as I say, this, this is just a start. If you get your if you get your uh, your beds well prepared and well fed, um, that's where the magic is. As I say, it's uh, we're not magicians. All the magic's in the muck, and it's it's all about preparing your beds. So I'll take you over now, and I'll uh, I'll show you how to how I like to start mine off. Right, well here we are. And of course, if I can get under these uh, plum trees, absolutely festooned with plums this year. They won't be warm with them. Right, the main thing is, is uh, over the last couple of weeks, me and Roger have been. Uh, Quite busy on with more um, get more compost bins ready. And of course, what I did there uh, yesterday was one of my priority jobs. I went, I'll show you when we go down. I went right through the polytunnel and cut all the, the lower leaves from the tomatoes, right up to the first and second trusses. And uh, the result, I got about four binfuls. I put a binful in each one. And what we like to do, put our green manure in, and then we'll follow up with a good. Beautiful. A good, well rotted horse muck. And that's it. Anything that comes from the house will go on top of that. Any seaweed, anything like that, rhubarb leaves, anything that comes up the garden, greenery, goes on next. And then once again, more horse manure, more manure, and it just keeps following on and following on and following on until the bins kind of get any more in. Uh, well, we've had a good rainfall, we like to leave the lids off. Get a good drop of water and keep it nice and moist, and then of course it's a matter of just putting your lid back on. If I can get over there and keeping it nice and warm, and of course by next year this will be well rotted down. Then bottom bins down the bottom end, they were filled at the beginning of the summer, beginning of this year, and they'll be ready for September, and these will be ready for next year. So they're given a good full year to, to completely rot down and give us some lovely brown there. Compost very far going into the, the bottom polytunnels, and that's what it's all about. As I say, it's uh, getting yourself a good manure to put in your land, 
feed the crops and you should get some uh, some perfect um, perfect crops as I say good well rotted manure in your beds um, bit of a couple of posts online the other night about uh, different diseases that you can get from, from horse manures it's never been a worry for me because as I say when I get my horse manure I always rot it down in the bins which is a, a, a goes to a year old if I get it any fresher than that then it goes on top of the beds and then the winter is allowed to wash it in before using in the springtime and then we'll get a as I say it's well washed in gets turned in and it's fantastic for the likes of teas and onions it's no problem with that um, but as I say that's the uh, that's the bulk of what manures you can use as I say when you come onto the onions when you're finishing them off something like blood fish and bone and uh, it just gives them a, a nice gentle feed and it, as I say it gets them ready for um, gets them ready for finishing off but uh, that's our tips for four manure get your bins filled keep topping them up the end of the year we'll get leaf mould. Leaf mould's completely different again. What we'll do with that, we'll, we'll bag it up and let it rot down naturally in the bags. And then we can just we can put it on with tomato plants or we can just tip it straight on the land, turn it in and it's a, exactly the same thing. It's a beautiful stuff, it's just for conditioning the soil and giving you a little bit of um, giving you a little bit of feed for the plants. But there, uh, we'll put ourselves down the tunnels now and we'll have a look at some of the crops. Right, well, I'm getting out that little bit of rain there, it's just starting to get a little bit heavy the rain for now, but uh, I'm well chuffed with that, it just means it's, uh, it's saving me a little job. At the moment I've got my wheatie hoses on, in both the tunnels, so they're getting watered by that, so that's, uh, it means I can just carry on um, getting this filming done. But if, you're, uh, if I turn my camera over there, you can see some of the pumpkins um, that have been grown. We won't put five pump pumpkins in this end of the tunnel, and uh, they're absolutely monsters. There were some nice fruits on there on the bottom, so I'm more than more with that. And of course, these are the uh, the marigolds that were pruning. These are the crackerjack. Uh, quite a quite a height, but um, I'm not bad because the sweet corn uh, is way up there now, and uh, I'm I'm well pleased with that. As I say, what I want to do, uh, what I want to concentrate on on this weekend is getting uh, is getting started sorting on some of these grapevines. Uh, I haven't done much work with them this year, as I say. I haven't got myself fully recovered, but. Um, up till now, I'm over the moon and I've got some, got some lovely uh, bunch of grapes on. But once again, uh, they get well fed in the January and the February. We'll get, we'll probably get take a whole bin full of uh, one of them outside bins, tip it out, and it'll be spread right round the grapevine. Now the grapevine's in the centre of the bed there, and the grapevine roots can spread out two, three, four foot all round the circumference of the grapevine. So you know, it's it's going to it's going to have a good thick six inch mulch of manure right round that bin at the end of the year and uh, that's what gives it the grapevine all its strength at the moment it's um i haven't managed to get the far end uh pruned yet because i still i'm still not allowed to climb so i don't do anything overhead height but uh, this vine here the, the way it's trailing along i've managed to start and prune a lot of the the side streets that i do want and there's still quite a few bunches on here but what I'm going to do I'm going to start from this end and work my way along if I come to the small bunch like there's a small bunch up on here I'll take that one off there's, uh, there's two bunches there that are pretty near each other uh, this is the best bunch of the two of them there, there is a few little seedless grapes immature ones in amongst them so the best bet to do is get a nice sharp pace of this I know it's a tedious job but just to go in amongst them and just cut them off and what it'll do, it'll help the other ones expand um, as they're growing and they'll not touch each other so there's less, less chance of you getting diseases um, any plate, mildew is one of the worst things you can get on the grapevine but um, if, there's, if they're nice and free, if, they, if you're pruning amongst the grapes and cut all the little ones off you should give yourself enough room for the grapes to expand and not touch each other but um, as I say They'll swell right out and you'll get a, you'll get a first class bunch of grapes but we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on them I'm not sure whether to take that one off and we'll just leave this one on here there's, there's only a few little immature grapes on that bunch there it's quite well formed already so I don't have to take as much off there but this one I might just cut that one off all together there's a one up a height here you'll not be able to see but it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic I'm over the moon with that one but as you work your way along as I say we've got bunches all the way and if I go right round I must have uh, with a rough count, I must have 50 or 60 bunches on here. 
Now I'm going to cut that right in half. I'm probably going to end up with about 30 punches. 25 to 30 punches, which is quite enough for us. Uh, but you see, once again, it's all down to the feeding. And it's all down to the aftercare. Pruning, feeding, and I say, um, well watered, because grapes do need an awful lot of water. But um, when I've got the polytunnel weekly hoses on, it's not so bad, because there's, there's water getting down to the bed all the time. And of course, them grapevine roots will be spreading right out, and they'll be taking a lot of uh, a lot of water. That's why I don't like to plant too much stuff up here. Any tomatoes or any sweet corn. I like to keep this area um, pretty clear. But for this for this year, I've stuck a couple of pumpkins in, and uh, they can look after themselves. You know, they'll uh, they just uh, they're romping away. <coughs> but um, what I'm going to do with you is, is say work my way along, prune the bunches down, take the ones off that I don't want, and then just there. Uh, Make sure they get a good feed again once a week. Manured water. I can use um, I can use comfrey. I can use seaweed. Uh, I can use good old horse muck. I'm just getting some good horse mucks. What I'll be doing next week in next week's video, I'll make up a bag, um, an old onion bag, fill it with horse muck, and we'll drop in the barrel in the water barrel. And what that'll do, it'll just make it a lovely brown tea, just like soup. I'll not be drinking it, but uh, I'm sure my plants will be looking forward to getting a good drink of that. If you don't want to use chemicals, there's plenty of stuff out there I can use well without having to revert to um, man-made uh, feeds in it. As I say, I've got nothing against them, but my point of view is, if I can find some organic, then I'll use it. Uh, and when you get crops like this, don't complain. Uh, just for the sake of a little bit of, a little bit of walking, a little bit of hunting, and uh, some nice bags of horse manure, and I'm over the moon. But uh, yeah. That's the that's start of them. We're going to pop in next row into the greenhouses because uh, some of the crops are doing really well. And I'll show you how we're getting on with the uh, Spanish tomatoes. And there's a few lads uh, getting a bit panicky with their tomatoes. They're getting a bit um, they're getting a bit big. Well, you know, the best way to do with your tomatoes is once you, once you get up past the second and third trusses, it's just trim away them bottom leaves. Um, your suckers, take them off. With the likes of Spanish tomatoes, it can be you can end up with a double header, which is you know it's not, not a bad thing, but uh, just be careful your suckers because uh, they will shoot away uh, pretty well if you just let them grow and uh, and of course it's sapping all the goodness out of your plant. But I'll show you my uh, tomatoes next door, and of course we've got cucumbers, I've got peppers to feed today, so that's another thing. As I say, it's, it's all about feeding, and if you give your plants the right feed at the right time, and uh, you shouldn't have any bother, but. Um, I'm just going to quickly turn you around in the bottom po po polytunnel here. We've got the sweet corn in here. Uh, they're growing away pretty well, but the beans, they've absolutely, absolutely rumped away. And these are, of course, are the, uh, the pea aldermen uh, that I put in. Now, we've got the sweet corn in there. The sweet corn are just up to the blue rayers there now, but there's, there's plenty of cobs on down below. And, of course, down below that, on the bottom, um, if I can see, we've got our melons. Our well, melons are growing away really nice. Um, now I've just been working my way through these, trying to weed them out. Uh, as I say, the whole bed's completely covered now, so the idea of the weepy hoses now, they can just water the whole beds. The melons will creep round everything, and hopefully within a couple of weeks they'll actually cover the whole canopy. But um, yeah, up to now they're growing really well. I'm, I'm pleased with them. And of course the marigolds are doing their job. They're just at a lovely height there, they're just waist height, and that's, that's what I want. And they're going to keep the white fly and the green fly away. Uh, the peas are growing really well, so they're feeding the sweet corn, so yeah, everything's growing pretty well in here, so I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. And of course, once again, this bed gets really heavily mucked um, every year. Now, when, once these come out, <coughs> once these come out, the spring cabbage will go into here. So we'll, we'll be using this land straight away, but what we'll do, we'll not put anything too heavy in, we'll just empty a couple of muck bins out, and we'll tip the air. Uh, the bins that we've got down the bottom here, we'll tip a couple of bins onto there, and uh, that'll do that because uh, what will happen is the spring cabbages will go in there, the spring cabbage will over winter, right over until next spring before we, we tomatoes come in here. Different cropping, different tunnels, changing the crops around every year always helps with it, uh, so you don't get a build up of any diseases. But uh, if you look after your soils, give them plenty of manure, and of course it's giving them the proper feeds to your, to your different plants. And uh, and that's how we get a fantastic crop. But uh, we'll pop in next door anyway, and we'll see what's what's happening with the tomatoes. Okay. 
Right, well here we are in the uh, first tunnel and uh, of course I'm going to get soaking here because uh, there's a weepy hose there and of course it's, uh, I've got a little bit of leak here but it's, uh, it's doing its job um, it's nice and slow and uh, down the side of the tomatoes and just giving it, uh, giving it a nice Give it a nice drink. I can, I can let these go for uh, for four or five hours. Sometimes I've let it go overnight time, and they uh, come in the morning, and the, the entire bed's been lovely and lovely and wet. But that's what it's all about. Now these tomatoes here, um, you see, I've had to put a, an extra tire on there, and just tied it up to the timber up a height, and all that's done is just supporting that truss. Because if you let it go too long, especially with these Spanish ones, the truss will completely bend over, and what will happen? It'll stop feeding the tomatoes. So what I like to do is just put a little gentle tire on them and just stop it from going down altogether. Uh, another little tip I spoke about the other week, it was the rear. Uh, just go down the truss and there again we have a little immature branch here that should have carried a couple of tomatoes and just nip them off. Here a second as. Quite easy job to do. Even though like I said that one there, that small tomato there that's in the, in the middle. Nip that off because it's getting in the way of the big tomatoes here. There's two quite nice ones on here. They ain't never going to make anything. And once again, we've got flowers on here. Nip them off. You'll get little immature tomatoes growing on there. And they're actually, they're no good whatsoever. So that's it. That trust here to me is perfect. That's three lovely good tomatoes. And by the time they are fully grown, they'll be fantastic. There's a bit of movement around them. The air can get around them. The, the, the branches have been taken away. So the light can get them, and they'll end up with a first class crop of tomatoes. There's some absolute humdingers there on the, on the next crop up here. But what we've got here again, once again, we've got some little infertile flowers there, so I'm going to nip that off there. And then there's a branch coming out here with one tomato one from the, I think that's from the, it's from the truss below. Well, it's from the same truss, but it's got, actually it's got one tomato one, and the rest are infertile flowers, so I'm going to just nip that out. And uh, this is what I mean by just going around and checking their trusses. If you're leaving stuff like that on, uh, it's never going to come to anything. You're never going to get a decent day tomorrow off it, so far better just cut it off and be done with it. And there, uh, once again on that truss, we've got a couple of little infertile flowers on the end of them. Cut them off. There's another one there. And there's the first class trusses. I can even take away a couple of them ones and leave them four on, and them three on. But uh, I'm over the moon with them. They're growing well. There's a truss higher up. Um, which no doubt we'll get tomatoes on but they're uh, overall they're looking first class and we'll be moving with them and all I like to do is say just keep nipping the trusses off them uh, but they're growing really well and by the time they're ripen they'll be a first class tomato but it's all about just uh, going along the bottoms keeping them nice and clean weed free what I've done in years gone by is say uh, when I've got my leaf mould is to cover the whole bed with leaf mould, uh, but unfortunately this year, as I say, it's been poorly. I never got round to doing that. We never got the leaf mould, but I will be doing it. I will be addressing it this year. Come September, when the leaves start falling, I'll be round with me barrow, uh, bagging them all up. And what I like to do is put a good mulch, a good three or four inches of leaf mould, right around all the tomatoes. It keeps them nice and cool. It keeps the weeds down, and it keeps your water in. It's a win-win situation all the time. And once again, once you come to turn this land over for your next crop. That leaf mold will be turned in, and it's just it's great humus for, for feeding the soil and for feeding your plants. Now once these tomatoes are finished here in September and October, this land will be completely cleared, and it'll not get it'll get a good mucking, and it'll not be used again until next year because the um, well first early titties will go into this crop here, into this uh, into this bed here. So as I say, we're switching it around year in year out. We're getting a different crop. And it's keeping the pest free, but uh, that's the whole idea. But I'm moving more with tomatoes this year, they're growing really well. Right, well, how's everybody getting on with the peppers and the chilies? Well, uh, fortunately, it's one of these jobs I had to get out of the way last week. Uh, I've got a little bit of white fly on some of them. Uh, on, on the whole, the chilies are, uh, they're looking quite well. Um, as I say, there's a little bit of white fly in them. What I didn't mind to do was to keep a, a few marigolds. I've put, put a few in the far greenhouse here, but uh, there's still a little bit of white fly starting to appear on these, so I'm going to give them a, 
I'm going to give them a spray with soapy water. And uh, one of the main jobs they do this time of year is once the fruit set, as I say, all they're getting is a, a light potash feed. Uh, once again, comfrey, uh, seaweed, manure water, anything you got. Give them a good feed of that. When, when, when these were potted up, I use my own mix, um, my own compost, some multi purpose compost, sharp sand, and a couple of good handfuls of bone meal. A bone meal is a long lasting fertilizer, so it stays in the pots for a good few months. So it's keeping them well fed. But as the fruits come on, you want to change, you've got to change your, uh, change your feed and your potash for your fruits. But what I like to do is just to get a small hand spray um, and a spoonful of Epsom salt, just a spoonful, teaspoonful, some warm water, and I like to give them a good spray from top to bottom. And of course, that's the magnesium for the peppers and the chilies, especially they'll need. So they'll get, they'll get a good, a good sprinkling, a good soaking of um, Epsom salts. And that once a month, there's fruits on there now. There's some nice peppers at the far end there. Eh? As I say, so I'll be, rig I'll be giving them a regular feed each week, but once a month. I'll be giving them a good soaking of uh, Epsom salts, a good spraying with it, and uh, that'll keep them nice and healthy to no end. But what I'm going to do today is just get a bit of soapy water out and give them a good spraying with soapy water, and hopefully that'll keep the, that white fly away. Um, I've got a couple of marigolds on this pot, man, there. What I'll have to do next year is to make sure I save a couple, because there's nothing wrong with planting a few small marigolds in the pots itself. And uh, of course that'll keep them nice and clean, but yeah. Up to now, I'm over the moon with them. The peppers are and the chilies are romping away, so I'm well pleased with that. Uh, I just want to go up now and just check on the cucumbers. And hopefully, they'll be fine. As I say, if, if I move the if I move the, um, the camera around and just uh, show you what it's like in here, it's an absolute uh, jungle. Or as I say, there's some of the some of the bell peppers coming on there now over at the back there. Absolutely beautiful. There, I'm moving one of them, and of course these are all these tomatoes here are the ones that I saved from different people from around different parts, um, different parts of the country, and uh, oh, they're growing real well. I'm, I'm pleased with them. There's some, there's some nice crops on them, uh, and they're all marked. So as I say, if need be, I can keep all the, um, I can keep all the, the seeds that I need. Now these are the butternut squash. Now I was in two minds whether to use these. To go in between the um, for the three sisters, I'm glad I didn't know because uh, as you can see, that they're grown monsters, they're absolutely romping away. And of course, I've been in amongst them and I haven't found any fruits yet, so I don't know what the problem is there. I don't know whether it's too warm or or what, but um, they would have taken over the uh, they would have taken over the the sweet corn and the peas to no end. You can see the shoots are absolutely shooting up, so I'm going to. Just I'm going to have to go in there with a pair of seconds and start cutting some some of this, some of this growth back. I say, uh, it just goes to show you how fertile our beds are when they're growing like that. And uh, most of these tomatoes now they're up, up to the top of the light, top of the rope there. That's a good uh, four or five foot. So I'm over the moon with that. They'll get nipped out next week. They'll get tied in, get the last tire, and then the fruits will uh, start swelling away. And as I say, what we can do, I've already went along the bottom here. I've uh, I've removed most of the flowers, most of the. Uh, the truss, the leaves from the bottom trusses, so it lets the light through. And uh, as I say, what I'll do, I'll tie them in the top and then just let them go. These are getting the feed of, um, they're getting some nettle juice, they're getting some comfrey, and of course, once again, I went along and I put a little sprinkling of uh, seaweed fertilizer around them, so they're, they're over the moon. And of course, whatever's in the ground, uh, once again, we'll put their uh, own compost in here uh, that will rot down throughout the year, a couple of binfuls on each bed. And of course the plants are loving it. They're absolutely loving it. They're thriving there. But I'm over the moon with that. But there. Uh, last job today, I just want to check on the cucumbers because uh, I know there's a few sites you starting to romp away on them. And uh, I'm going to try and address them this afternoon. Right, well, here we are. A little bit there. Uh, we trouble with the camera, starting to get a bit there, uh, going a bit crazy on us at the moment, but there, uh, no doubt. I think I'm well turning on the cucumbers. And of course, this is the, uh, the La Diva. Now, uh, one of my son's friends on the internet um, posted a couple of pictures of the night of the, the cucumbers I had given. Unfortunately, they ended up um, being Malaga melons, 
Sorry about that stew, but uh, at least you'll be able to enjoy a couple of nice melons. <coughs> but uh, yeah, the cucumbers, they need a little bit of them. Um, and some absolutely fantastic bottom cucumbers come on there. I'm over the moon with them. But what I like to do is just pinch away these bottom side shoots. If they're grown away, just knit them away. There's another one there. There we are. Because they've got little, little female fruits on the bottom. But uh, as I say, at the bottom of the plant, they're no good to me. I like to get the main stem grown up whatever support you have. Uh, these need a little bit of tying back at the moment because they're starting to get a little bit out of hand. So I'm going to put some extra strings from the roof. But once again, like I say, just there. Uh, I like to knit away the bottom leaves so the fruits are nice and clean. Just like what we're doing with the tomorrows. Uh, that's well trained there, that's grown up there, but that's, that's taped really well. You will get little bits and pieces coming away, but they, on the whole, they're grown really well. There's some lovely, lovely cucumbers on there, and I'm over the moon with that. There, that's our, uh, that's our little diva. We've, we've, we've grew two or three different varieties this year. Uh, the crystal apple at the far end, there's some nice cucumbers growing on there. They're get, starting to get a bit out of hand at the moment, but they um, I'm going to work my way through them and try and get there, uh, try and get them all pruned off. But uh, once again, crops need feeding, so the soluble feed will do for these if they're in grow bags. Um, what I normally do and normally is is put them in big buckets. I've got my own feed in, plenty of good manure, and the cucumbers grow really well. But uh, for this year, I've had to be a bit quick and uh, never had much time. I'm stuck in grow bags, but they're growing away just as well. As I say, once again, all I'm doing is give this a little bit of seaweed. I did give them a sprinkling the blue fishing bone around the top of the pots, and all the, the main watering is going into, into the, uh, the grow bag, and it's keeping the roots nice and moist. But uh, I'm over the moon with that. They're growing away. They're growing away re really well. As I say, uh, it's all about um, it's all about getting your getting your crop in, uh, getting your manures in. Get your feeds in, and of course you'll uh, you'll end up with crops like that. Now, as I was saying before, there's a couple. There's actually a fruit down there. Um, I've just noticed that. I've actually got one fruit coming on these butternut squash. So I'm uh, I'm over the moon that no doubt when I work my way through them, um, because some of the side shoots. That's one of them there. So that'll be coming straight off. I'll nip it off there, and as I work my way down the side here, you can see them coming up the height, that's a big side shoot. If I go down the side shoot, and just uh, nip them away, and not do a plant any harm, but any fruits that are on the bottom, it's going to help them swell out, and you see it's going to, uh, it's going to keep your plant um, fixed in the spot where you want it, and instead of it crawling all over. There's, there's actually a couple of tall down there, taller than what the tomatoes are. So I'm going to have to work my way down this bed here with me set it as, and just nip away all the the, the runners. That's, uh, that's spreading right out. But uh, I'm hoping for some good crops off them. But as I say, it's all about trial and error. I've never grew this variety before. So in one way I was glad I didn't put this in with the three sisters because it would have been a bit too heavy. But uh, for the bit of land that we had down the side of the, down the middle of the tomato plants, it's fine. It's covered the bed, it's done its trick, it's kept the weeds down, it's keeping the moisture nice and cool, and of course I'm going to get a few um, putting the squash off it at the end of the year. And that's what it's all about. Look at your plants, feed them well, and uh, as I say, all the magic's in the muck. Look after your muck, look after your soil, and uh, it'll reward you tenfold. Um, and as I say, that's what we like to do, is to spend as much time um, on the land, looking after the land, and as I say, it'll repair ten times over. But uh, that's what it's all about: giving, the, giving your plants a proper feed, and when they want it, and you shouldn't have any problems. But uh, I'm just going to work my way through these. <coughs> what I want to do next week is I want to get my seeds out, get my seed packets out, because I've got quite a few seeds to get started on. Um, I've got fox gloves um, to start on. Winter flowers, um, polyanthus can go in, pansies can go in. What I'll be doing, I'll be sown outside, but they'll be under cover under a polythene sheet and on the back bench at the garden, over the far side there, over the far side of the garden. They'll be on the benches, 
and they'll just have a little bit of their polycarbonate over the top of them. Open all the front so it'll be nice and cool and I'll set the seeds away in trays. Good quality compost, good multi-purpose compost, plenty of shop sanding, free draining and I'll set the trays on the bread trays, paper underneath so I can water from underneath and hopefully we'll get some good seedlings to start transplanting in a couple of weeks time. But we'll do all that in, in the next video. As I say, we'll, um, it's been all about feeding this this video. Uh, if you feed your plants, um, you shouldn't have any problems, you know. It should grow re really well. Diseases-wise, I'm lucky. I haven't had anything this year. I mean, touch wood, I've had nothing to, uh, I've got a little bit of white fly down the bottom there, but I've been really pleased this year, and it's been, it's been warm. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining about um, diseases and the leaks and that, and the leaks falling over. I've been really lucky. I've got some good crops of onions, got some good crops of potatoes. We're starting on there. Uh, we're fruits now. We're, we're raspberries. We've had lots of strawberries. And of course, we've got melons coming on. We've got pears, apples. Our fruit crops really fantastic this year. So, as I say, it's all down to feeding and it's all down to just looking after your plants. Uh, take care of them, and no doubt they'll take care of you. But uh, I'm going to knock off now, try and get this video online. I just hope I'll, be, I'll give you a little look around the plot and show how we'll get on with, with, with our crops. See what tomatoes, cucumbers doing really well, over the moon with them. And uh, maybe next week I might start and dig a few of the secondary taties up. They've had a good rainfall over the last couple of weeks, uh, over the last few days anyway. And of course the leeks that I planted uh, four weeks ago, if you remember, if you go back on my videos, when I was planting the leeks out there, belting away, absolutely belting. And of course the, the ones that I was grown for trial, which are the blue, I'm going to have to look up my diary and find out which ones they were. They are absolutely stompers, they're lovely and thick, they've got a nice deep blue leaf. Um, I'm just hoping that they're going to be rust free, and if they are, well, I'm going to be growing them again next year. But that's what it's all about, it's trying different seeds, and uh, if they grow well in your garden, grow them every year. I always grow the, um, the same variety uh, for years now, because I've, I've been well pleased with it. But uh, this, this latest one, the blue one, like I say, it's doing really well. And I'll show you in the next video. And uh, it's quite possible that I might be growing that again for my full crop for next year. But it's, uh, it's all about, you see, trial and error and find out what works for best in your garden. But uh, I'm going to knock off now. But thanks for watching anyway. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, thanks for sharing. We've got uh, quite a few new uh, subscribers coming online. And uh, Tawana Jeffries, welcome to the plot. Uh, another uh, another lady from the States. Uh, we've got quite a few now coming over from uh, coming up our side from the United States. Well welcome everybody. Uh, we hope you're enjoying what we do on our little plot and uh, hope you get a few tips for, for yours. I'm just watching the news at the moment and uh, it looks like down in New Orleans they're gonna get quite a pounding if the uh, Hurricane Barry's making uh, making land tonight. So I'm uh, I'm hoping you're all okay over there. Just stay safe. Keep out, that, keep out the uh, the winds and the rain, and uh, stay, fit, stay safe in your house, as I say. You can always get back on your plots later on, whatever damage is done, as long as you're safe yourself. But, uh, as I say, thanks to all our American friends for joining with, and uh, just hope you're getting something from the plot. But stay safe, let Hurricane Barry blow over, and then you can get yourselves back on your plots again. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll see you all again in the next video, and we'll get uh, started on some uh, winter flowers or spring flowers for, for soon next week. Okay? See you all again soon. Bye for now.